In this tutorial I wanted to go over a few things about variables in MySQL and there's a lot of things that I still don't understand but from the from what I do understand I can teach you kind of the basics about how to use variables and some real world situations you might want to do that in. So just to show like all variables that you have in your session and uh, that's another uh, feature of variables you can have variables on a global level or just in your session or just in your session user um, uh, category thing so t if you do show variables you can see all the variables that you have available to you at this uh, at this point like in your session uh, and a lot of these have are like set for you um, when you create the database and uh, kind of start up MySQL server um, so you can set like a local variable just to yourself and this will just be uh, accessible for this one query um, so if I were to try to do it again like there in another query it shouldn't exist yeah puts a zero so what this is doing is uh, this is the variable name and the, it's preceded by the at symbol to declare it's very it's a variable a variable can be uh, either type of uh, it can be a null it, it defaults to be a string data type you can make it a number um, but it's uh, more limited to the data types uh, as opposed to like a, a very strict column in your database so for this example, I'm just using the select statement to set the variable, and this is the assignment operator, and then this is the value I'm going to give it. So I'm going to go ahead and run that one statement, and it says hello world. So that's kind of how you print that out to the screen. And this is the one I just wrote. Um, so looks like you can uh, look at it through another uh, query. As you're as you're doing things, so this is one way to set them in your user session. Um, so looking at this next one, this is how you would set uh, a variable through a join. So let's say you couldn't set it through uh, a select statement or something, and you want to join on the variable type. You can put it inside of an inner select and join it as a table, and then you can say my var dot var because that's the variable name schema I have set up here and this will print out hello world for every employee so go moving forward that kind of idea and thinking um, you can actually create employee numbers on the fly for queries um, and these won't be written to the database they're just going to be dynamically created and I was messing around with this a little bit and it's kind of interesting um, what you can do with this. So what this is doing is uh, it's setting the variable employee number thing and it's saying if this is null, which will be null by default when it starts, then put the number one. And then we're going to go ahead and add one to that number and we're going to uh, describe it as one, so to say one up here. So it would actually start off in theory as two because one plus one is two. So let's go ahead and do that and so it doesn't do that for some reason um, if I put a zero here then it does that so I'm not completely sure what is happening behind the scenes there um, also interesting is if I do minus one you would expect it to be negative one but it doesn't do that it goes backwards um, from a thousand so it's interesting so it's assigning it to be a thousand and then subtracting one from it um, so that was definitely uh, something interesting I was, I was looking at so this is how you would increment it by one and then decrement it what I did was I made it negative one here and then I subtracted one and that worked I'm um, not entirely sure why because this should start out as null originally and then it should start as 
negative uh, 1 unless it's taking a previous variable assignment that I assigned it so let's see what happens if I try to select and let's just see the value of that so it's negative thousand um, so it might be taking a previous value that I set to it which is why it's doing that uh, let's go ahead and sign it to null and see what happens colon uh, null okay so now it's null so now what I'm doing is if I set this to zero it's going to be zero minus one so then it should still be negative one okay so now if I run this again it has a different outcome okay so that's the reason why it was acting weird just one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this type of stuff um, so now it's ex working as expected so now uh, if we do plus one and we're gonna go ahead and assign this to null and then do plus one it should increment those so there we go um, so that's basically how you would do it through a select and that would do it for your user session so as soon as you were to exit out of this MySQL um, interface and turn off the server uh, those variables would go away you can make a variable global and so that way you would be static then and to do that you would just use a global identifier by just simply typing global and I'm not sure if it has to be capitalized here but I'm just following um, some documentation online and you need the uh, I think you need that Let's see colon equals uh, So the variable has to exist first before you would do that then. So let's go ahead and put an identifier here to find it's a variable. But it's not gonna like that. So you're going to have to declare this variable first. And I don't know how to do that off the top of my head, but you should be able to create global variables and also session variables or both. Um, I'll go more in depth in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.